So good morning to you all. Uh, so welcome to this lecture on uh, agricultural drainage. So yesterday we were uh, discussing about uh, the salt balance, right? Where so what are the possible inputs and outputs uh, so that it can be balanced? Okay. So that's we did yesterday the salt balance. So the salt input and salt output and the change in salt content within the root zone. Okay, this is what we uh, learned yesterday and followed by the leachate fraction. So the leachate fraction is the important uh, the parameter to decide, you know, how much input water, uh, you know, needs to be applied to the field so that the salt content can be managed. Okay. And then uh, uh, that would help the you know the crop uh, production, okay, right? So that should not hamper any uh, reduction in crop uh, productions or crop yield. Okay, so in order to uh, manage the salt content, so we also discussed at the end of the lecture that uh, managing the salt content or so using some artificial drainage. So providing drainage systems to the agricultural fields, you know, can benefit two ways. So the one is to um, reduce the level of water table, right? And the second is to control the salt concentration within the soil system. So today we are going to talk about, uh, so in general, what is uh, the field drainage or agricultural drainage? And then uh, what are the, uh, you know, the components of agricultural drainage? And when do we uh, really care about this agricultural drainage and drainage requirement, benefits, and all those things we are going to discuss today. So uh, the focus here is the agricultural Okay. So, as I said, so the main objective of the drainage in case of agricultural drainage is to lower down the water table below the root zone. That's the number one, so that you get, uh, you know, the uh, plant get uh, very good aeration and uh, to maintain the salt you know below the root zone so these two things are very important in order to uh, give favorable environment to the uh, crop okay so this could be you know uh, two ways one is the surface drainage And then the other one is subsurface drainage. So the mostly in surface drainage, it will see the uh, open ditches or the field drains. Let's say field drains, open ditches. So connecting to the uh, you know the surface. So uh, so that's why this is mostly used to uh, remove excess water from the surface. And uh, so wherever there is a water logging issue, so the surface drain is, is being adopted. So mostly to control the water logging, right? And where a subsurface drainage system, so it does both water logging and as well as the uh, salt, uh, you know, salinity control or salt control. Okay, so these uh, two, uh, you know, drainage systems generally we follow the surface drainage system and subsurface drainage system. Uh, surface drainage system mostly to remove the excess water from the surface by providing, uh, you know, the shallow ditches. Whereas in subsurface drainage system, so here we have like a shallow ditches. Uh, whereas in subsurface drainage system, you will have deep ditches 
or and also we call uh, drain pipes or tile drains or tiles we call. Okay, so so that that means the objective, as I just mentioned, uh, is to you know address the water table. So suppose you have so this is the uh, you know this land surface. And you have the crop. Let's say this is the crop. And suppose you have uh, the initial water level is this. This is the initial water level. Okay. So the objective is to uh, remove or, or remove excess water. This is what this is an excess water. We call this is excess water. So the point here is how to remove this excess water. OK, so for removing the excess water, so either you need to provide some ditches. So this is, let's say, I'm showing the cross-sectional view. So this is the ditch. So if you provide the ditch, what happens? The water will be, you know, run off into the ditch, and finally it has been collected, and the water finally uh, drained out using the main drainage system. So that we're going to talk about those components later. But this is uh, how this, you know, the surface drainage system uh, in which, so once the water is going down, the water table, this is called the water table. Okay, so that will be lowering down somewhere here. And, but our objective is, you know, here. This is our object. So you need to lower this water table from position zero to position one by providing the ditches. OK, so. So in this case, well, what happens if you see uh, I'm going to. So, OK, let's put here. Yeah. And this is the water table finally you get. So with shallow ditches, the water table can go beyond certain depth. Okay, so that may not be really helpful for, for the, the plants because plant root zone can vary from, you know, like 50 to one meter, right? So uh, digging shallow ditches with that dimensions would be really costly. So that's the reason we need to think about uh, these, you know, subsurface drainage systems. So in case of subsurface drainage systems, you will have deep ditches. And if suppose if you feel that that is really costing you too much, as well as that is costing the crop area. So then you need to avoid, you know, trenching the field and you will be providing the tiles. So if suppose this is the um, land surface and you have the plant which is growing here. Okay. And then uh, uh, suppose this is the. Uh, so let's say the initial water table. And you want to bring it down to somewhere here so that the plant can breathe easily. Okay, this is WT1. And in order to do that, so you will have to provide some tiles. So these are called the trials or the pipes. You can say pipes, underground pipelines. You can say. Okay, so with these pipes, what happens to water? Yeah, whatever. So that will be infiltrating it down. This will come out through these pipes. OK, so this is a, a subsurface. Drainage. And this is the surface drainage. So you can also provide the deep ditches here in this case, but that's really uh, costly. OK, you can also have in subsurface case, you can have deep ditches, but generally for agriculture, 
uh, we don't uh, uh, generally use the deep ditches because uh, that really uh, cost too much a lot of earthwork you need to uh, you know uh, work with and uh, and and also it, it you are going to lose a lot of farmland okay so that's why it's not really uh, adoptable or people don't go for you know deep ditches so they simply go for uh, tile drains in this all right so the next is uh, so what are the benefits of you know uh, agricultural drainage so the benefits so with that above explanation you can uh, you know understand what are the benefits so the first uh, the benefits of agricultural drainage Right. So, what are the benefits? Number one, it facilitates the early plowing. Okay. So, suppose the land is or the field is filled with water, and it's not draining out. So, you cannot use uh, you know heavy farm machinery equipment to plow the land. So with that, what happens? So it's a lot of compaction will be taking place that changes the soil structure, and that definitely influences the plant growth in the later stage. So you cannot plan the plowing early if the water is, uh, you know, uh, present in the field. So for plowing, you should have an, you know, ideal soil moisture. So that's the if you have a proper drainage system, definitely that will help in uh, early plowing so that's one thing and obviously so once the you know water which is standing water which is removed from the farmland so the pores are you know uh, very well accommodated with the uh, atmospheric air and that will improve the soil structure okay so this will definitely improve uh, soil structure and we all know how soil structure will uh, affect the crop growth. Okay. And, and then improves the infiltration uh, capacity. It improves infiltration capacity. Okay, so since uh, the soil is, you know, partially uh, saturated so the water which can enter easily from the top surface to the subsurface okay that improves the infiltration and uh, of course uh, since you are removing water from the soil so that really reduces the soil compaction and that eases the forming operations okay and the other important thing is it minimizes the crop damage at harvest time so suppose at the harvest time, so in harvest time what happens? So again, you need to use your farming equipment, right? In order to, uh, you know, harvest the crop. So in that case, if suppose the soil is, you know, uh, filled with water, let's say the farm is filled with water. So you cannot use the farming equipment to harvest the crop. So so that so if you have proper drainage system it minimizes the crop damage right at the harvest time so minimizes crop damage at harvest time okay so the next is uh, uh, two important parameters we need to understand in drainage um, for the design purpose. So the one is the drainable porosity. So drainable, yeah, drainable porosity. Okay, this is one time which is generally denoted with mu. So the drainable porosity. Suppose if you have the field, this is the soil surface. Okay, and let's say this is uh, what height above the water table. 
is a height above water table okay and let's say on x axis here this is a, a pore volume or let's say the soil moisture that is theta So, in the beginning, so this is height above the, uh, in the, in the beginning, so the, uh, so this is the, um, water table position in the beginning. This is the water table position in the beginning from the soil surface. Okay. So, if you see the theta, this is the theta S we call. This is theta s. So initially it's saturated, but if, if you if you observe closely, there are some pores indeed. And this is let's say this is uh, before you know uh, beginning of the drainage. So after beginning of after end of drainage, you started draining the field. So the the profile would be like this. This is after draining. You can this soil moisture. This is the soil moisture curve. Let's say. So, um, so whatever the space here, so that all these pores which are present in the soil system, so they, they are got empty. These are empty. So the other side, these are these, uh, a, you know, soil pores are being filled with water. So this has been emptied. Okay. So, so what, what happened initially the water table would be like this and then the later the water table is you know down from position one to position two okay right so for this much drop in the water table remember so in in drainage you need to drop the water table down okay so in order to drop from position one to position two so you are going to lose water through drain pipe and the soil pores are going to empty it. Okay. And so the empty it, so this is important. How, I mean, what are the pores effectively drained? That's important. Okay. So the drainable pore space is, this is called the drainable pore space, uh, uh, pore space. This is a drainable pore space. Right, so the soil pores, which are experiencing the drainage, it's called drainable pore space. Okay, so then the the amount of water which is uh, you know removed from the effective pore space is called drainable pore water. So it's it's like it, it's it, this is this is just like you have a, you know honeycomb, right? So it contains all this, you know, hexagonal uh, honey cells, so they are filled with honey. So the moment if you squeeze, so you're going to get the honey back, right? And they open it, so all this, you know, hexagonal honey, uh, what do you call it? So those uh, homes or cells, whatever. So those are emptied, okay? Those are emptied. So the emptied pore space, if you can count everything, so that's the pore, uh, we call the drainable pore space. And the honey you got from that is drainable, let's say, pore water or pore honey. Okay, so that's the, the difference. So now let's find out what is the drainable porosity in, in that case. So from here, the drainable porosity, drainable porosity is defined as um, the drainable pore water divided by the uh, what, what is what is the effect what is the result result in this what the, you you bring the water table down from position one to position two okay so that's the thing then so this mu which is equal to drainable we call this is a drainable pore water divided by water table drop. 
okay multiplied by 100 put it on there so drainable poor water so in order to you know uh, bring the water table from position 1 to position 2 so what, what how, how much area or how much pore space is being drained and what is the amount of you know water you collected so that's the drainable pore water so it's like a drainable pore water is been resulted uh, for a unit drop in water table. So that's the drainable pores porosity. So mu is equal to, you can also put in like a total porosity minus water content after, or you, you can say the porosity Or porosity at field capacity, let's say. Okay, so that means your, your mu is equal to theta s, so theta s minus theta fc, field capacity. So that's the mu. So that that means it fully depend on the gravity. This is a so only because of the gravity, whatever water you are getting it out, so that's the uh, drainage water. So how much water you can get? That is theta S minus theta FC. So this will give you the, the, the difference uh, in the soil moisture from saturation to the field capacity. So that is uh, solely experienced by the gravity. Okay, so that, that's the thing. And there is another term we call the drainage intensity. So other term called the drainage intensity or drainage coefficient. Intensity or drainage coefficient. So this is generally expressed with mm per day. So it, it is, the definition is simple. It is defined as the depth of water that is removed or to be removed per day from a field for successful growth of a crop. So that is the drainage uh, coefficient. So that means in one day, the amount of water is being removed from the drainage system or the field uh, is called the drainage intensity or drainage coefficient. So the simply the you know the depth of water removed in a day. Okay, suppose you have this is the field, and it it has water, and if you can drain this, if you can drain the water, so let's say you have a D depth of you know water is been drained in a day, so then D D will be the drainage coefficient. Okay, D mm per day is that drainage coefficient. Okay. So this drainage, uh, drainable porosity, whatever we, we were uh, discussing, so that will uh, be different from soil to soil. So drainable porosity. So the drainable porosity, so this will, will be different for soil to soil. Right? It is obvious. It's obvious. Suppose you have heavy structured soil, like clay soil, right? And uh, see the water holding of clay soil will be higher, right? Will be higher. So uh, suppose if you bring the water table from position one to position two, so the amount of water will be drained be less compared to the sandy soil. The sandy soil, so the gravity effect will be more. So the pores are easily can be emptied compared to clay soils. So that's why the drainable porosity will be, you know, highest in sandy soils and lowest in clay soils. Okay, so for clay soils, 
So it will be like uh, 3 to 11 percent and for sandy soil so it, it, it can go up to 35 percent. Okay, so it's a drainable forest. So this information is very important. So based on, you know, the capacity of soil to drain, right? So that really help in designing a drainage system, like, you know, how many laterals? So what is the size of the lateral? How close we need to put these laterals so that uh, the, the entire field can be, you know, uh, drained properly. And also that will, uh, you know, decide which crop, you know, what is an appropriate crop, uh, you know, needs to be grown in the particular field, right? Clay soil versus sandy soil. This information is really uh, important before you uh, design a drainage system. Okay, so the next is, let's, let's focus on an example on how to estimate this drainable uh, porosity. This is an example. So how much water is drained from a root zone when water table drops from 6 centimeter to 48 centimeter and drainable porosity is 8%. So this is the question. So you have a form field. Let's say this is the form field. And you have water table. Let's say this is the water table, initial water table. Uh, zero and you have a final water table. This is WT1. Okay. And then, uh, so initially, so from the surface, so this has like a six centimeter from the surface, this water table, whereas the other water table, it has 48 centimeter. So this is the final water table. So you draw initially, water table was at here and the water table is brought to 48 centimeter below the surface by, uh, by providing the drainage system. Okay. So in that case, uh, the drainable porosity is given, that's mu. So mu is equal to 8%. If the mu is 8%, so that means only, uh, suppose 100, there are 100 pores, so 8 pores can, you know, uh, be under the influence of drainage, right? So then what is the, you know, drainable pore water? So you need to know in order to bring from WT0 to WT1 with mu is equal to 8%, so how much water is being drained from the field? So that is the question. So we know the equation that mu is equal to drainable water, So drainable pore water divided by water table drop into 100. Okay, I'll put 100 here. So, which is equal to, so we, we want to know this one, right? The other things are given. So now from here, the drainable pore water is equal to mu into water table drop. So let's say delta H. So the water table drop uh, is easy. So this is 8%, 8 by 100 is mu multiplied by water table drop is 48 uh, to 6. So which is equal to 3.36 centimeter. So the meaning is so around 3.36 centimeter of water is being drained from the field uh, when you drop the water table from 6 centimeter to 48 centimeter. So this is the one. But if you, if you see the time is not mentioned here, so how long uh, that went. Uh, suppose if the time is given, probably we could have uh, uh, you know, also determined the drainage coefficient suppose if uh, this this uh, drainable pore water is 
is resulted in in a day like one day one day of operation right so in order to bring the water table from 6 cm to 48 cm it took one day so in that case so the drain bull uh, so the drainage coefficient is the drainage coefficient will be 3.36 cm per day or 33.6 mm per day okay so the time is not given suppose the time if you mention that this has happened in one day so then this will be like a drainage coefficient now okay all right so the next uh, is uh, there is another example so that soil, so let's see this, uh, another example to find out the drainable porosity, the other way. Okay. So example two. So a soil has saturation moisture content of 37%, field capacity moisture content of 20%. So the both are in dry basis and a bulk density of 1.25 gram per centimeter cube. Find out the drainable porosity. Okay, so that is the question, okay? So, so you have a soil, you have a soil system, so that has the saturated moisture content, that is theta S, which is equal to 37%, and the field capacity moisture content theta fc so that is 20 percent right and these both are in dry basis bulk density that is bd which is equal 1.25 gram per centimeter cube so bulk density is given because you need to convert this into wet basis. So you need to multiply with uh, bulk density. So the question here is what is drainable porosity? What is U? That is the question, right? So the field has theta S, 37%. Field capacity is 20%. Bulk density, 1.25 gram per centimeter cube. So in that case, what is mu? Okay. So in the earlier we discussed, so whatever the water, the drainable pore water, right? So that is the result of this theta S and theta Fc, the subtraction of theta S and theta Fc, okay? So, so the drainable porosity mu, the mu, we have the total porosity minus minus what the the field like the moisture soil moisture at field capacity because below field capacity the gravity is not going to influence anymore gravity effect on soil moisture will be zero. So only, so theta S, in between theta S and theta F, so the gravity can pull easily the soil moisture. Okay, so that's why the total porosity, we also call total porosity as theta S, right, uh, minus theta Fc. Since it is in, uh, uh, you know, dry basis, you need to multiply with bulk density to keep it in wet basis okay and uh, that's it so you can get mu value so which is equal to so 37 minus 20 since it is a percentage divided by 100 multiplied 1.25 and you get 0 0.2125 or 21.25 is the percentage is the mu drainable porosity okay so 
So that means 21.25% of the pores are being emptied during the uh, drainage process. Okay, so that's the meaning of that. And then the next is, so similar to the, you know, field water balance, uh, we, we have like, if you have a drainage system, so field water balance, will have that drainage component. So that means you have a, uh, this is the field surface and you have the crop. So water balance would be like, the first one is the precipitation, P, right? And uh, suppose in the, in the idle case, if you're not using an irrigation, so you can also put irrigation if you want. So that's the total input. Output is the ET, the output transpiration, and you get a runoff, the surface runoff R, and uh, so this is the root zone. And beyond that, you, you're going to have the uh, your tail drains. These are the drains. So this. You'll, you'll get anyway outflow from the drain that is D, D outflow. Okay. And uh, the soil water storage will be S. And deep percolation will be DP. The DP is the deep percolation. Okay. So with this, the precipitation, the amount of precipitation plus I, the water input, will be equal to runoff plus ET plus DP, right, plus S plus D is the drainage water also. So this is the, you know, balance. So the next is the, what is the concept of drainage? So I, even uh, before uh, concept of drainage, so let's focus on the components of drainage. What are the components of drainage system in general? Drainage system. So it could be surface, it could be subsurface drainage system, but in general, so what are the, uh, the components? So the field drain is the basically there's the two ways of drainage. So one is uh, called the groundwater drainage. Groundwater drainage. So mostly this is a subsurface drainage we call subsurface, and the other one is shallow drainage. Shallow drainage, as I indicated in the beginning. So this is the surface drainage. So in both cases, the components are common, right? In overall view, if you think. So the components here, um, suppose in case of groundwater drainage, so I, maybe I'll turn this way, so it'll be better. Is. Okay, so the groundwater drainage, suppose this is the, yeah, so suppose if this is the land surface and you have a deep ditch like this, sorry, yeah, if this is the deep ditch and so this is a recharge from the ground is taking place. So the water will be going down. This is the deep ditch. Okay. And this is since this is the ideal system. 
So let's uh, assume that it contains another tiled drainage. This is a tiled drainage here. Okay. So the water table is like this. This is the water table once it is drained. Okay. So then water flow paths will be from here. From here. Let's say from here. Yeah. So these are the flow paths. Okay. So it basically contains three systems. One is a field system, main system, outlet system. So the field system. So that is this is basically located within the field, right? Within the field and then collects the water from the field and and uh, uh, convey it to the main system. So the main system, uh, you know, collects the water from all field channels and um, convey it to the outlet. So in the outlet, we are going to uh, decide whether it is a gravity outlet or pump outlet. It all depends on where the so drainage base, right? Where the drainage base of the sink of the sink is you know, located. If suppose the drainage base of the sink, so you understand the source and sinks, right? So the source is the drainage system. Sink is where you want to dump it. Okay. So suppose if the so the sink has the uh, the drainage base higher than the, uh, you know, the actual drainage system. So you need to pump the water because the elevation is higher. So whereas if the sink's drainage system is lower than the drainage base of the drainage system, so then you don't need to, that's called gravity. It goes simply, uh, you know, gravity flow, you, you can, you know, uh, dispose. Okay. So, uh, this is the deep ditch. Uh, okay, so from here, this is called a field system. So this is the field. This is the field system. And from the field system, so in the field system, as I said, you have drainage. These are the field ditches. One is the deep ditch. This is the deep ditch. The other one is uh, tailpipe. So in both cases, this is both are these uh, field systems. So from these field systems are being connected to no, uh, main system. So this is the main system. Okay, all these main systems are being connected to an outlet system. So these outlets are one is pump outlet. This is the pump outlet. The other one is gravity outlet. Okay. So, so this is the outlet system. This is outlet. So there's basically three main uh, parts. I mean components, one is field system, main system, outlet system. The field system, this is basically we're locating, you know, within the field, across the field. Main system, it could be, you know, between the fields or at the end of the field. The main system, the main job is to collect water from the field systems, or field channels. So once it is collected, it could be like a single field or multiple fields. So the field system will collect all the water and um, you know, uh, convey it to the outlet system 
So where you can have the two outlet, two options, one is gravity outlet and pump outlet. Okay. So this is what we are showing here is since we are using deep ditch and tail uh, tail pipes. So this is a, a groundwater drainage or subsurface drainage. This is called subsurface drainage. And the other one is uh, we have a shallow drainage too. We have a shallow drainage. So in case of shallow drainage, uh, I'm going to draw the similar uh, picture here. Uh, only the ditch is the shallow. It's not deep ditch, the shallow ditch. And then um, you have, suppose if, if you have a mold drain, mold drain generally used in clay soils. We are going to talk about this mold drains. Okay, so that's also shallow drain, mold drain, and uh, it could be like a shallow ditch. Let's say you have a shallow ditch here. Okay. So this is a shallow ditch. Yeah, shallow ditch. Mostly this is this is for overland flow, right? This is overland flow or interflow. Okay. So it's an overland flow plus interflow. And this is also been since it is a, a field system. This is also a field system. So we are uh, connecting to the um, main system. Right. So this is the main system. Now again, this is being connected to the outlet system like this. OK. So this has been connected to the outlet system. So, I mean, this, this is the all, all, all uh, possible drainage systems layout uh, component. It shows the components. So this is the typical and don't assume that, you know, the uh, in the real, the practical sense, we should have all these drainage systems together. It can have, you know, individual like shallow drainage, or subsurface drainage, or it's a combination, shallow or subsurface drainage systems together. But you must understand these are the main components, the field system, main system, outlet system. OK, and here in the outlet system, the pump outlet and gravity outlet, gravity outlet is possible. Uh, you have, suppose this is the drainage drain base, right? And so this is the outlet drain base outlet drain base, right? So this is lower. So suppose if this is the water level here, this is the water level here, this is the base, and of course this is the base for this. So this is easier, right? Through gravity, you can dump the drainage, uh, you know, uh, water, okay? So this, whereas in here, pump outlet, in case of pump outlet, what happens, you don't, you, your, um, the sinks drainage base, so that will be higher than. So I, I'll draw it here so that will be. So this is the drainage base, and this is you know your uh, drainage base of uh, the sink, right? So this is the drain water, and in order to you know empty. So you have to pump it. You have to pump from this to here. So you need a pump, pump to be used. So that's why the pump outlet and the gravity outlet. So this kind of situation can be seen in like a pump outlet case. So mostly the Netherlands. So Netherlands is you know below sea level uh, surface. So you need to pump it out. Okay. All right. So. Uh, and what are the 
problems, problems of drainage system. So benefits are good and the, the problems of drainage system already explained uh, all these problems, but you know, but still categorically the problems of you know, drainage system. The first thing is it impairs Crop growth. Obvious. This is we have been talking about this. Okay, impaired impaired crop growth. So it basically affects the crop respiration because you have the surface and there is a crop. We suppose this is inundated with water. So what happens? So there is no you know atmospheric air entry to the soil. Okay. So because of that soil, oh, you know, cannot breathe and it can take, you know, the dissolved oxygen which is present in the water. But how long the dissolved oxygen is going to be, uh, you know, consumed once is it's consumed. So there is a less dissolved oxygen present in water and and also the roots are going to, you know, um, result the CO2. OK, so the CO2 water, you know, the carbonated water will increase and that will be toxic not only to the soil biota and also the crop. So that's why that will definitely yeah, affect the uh, crop growth. OK, and that increases the, the toxicity. OK, and of course the soil health. So all these things or the, I mean, if you do not drain uh, the soil properly, or the field properly, the first thing is going to affect your crop growth. And the second is farming operations. So second is farm operations. Farm operations are very important for crop management. Okay, and uh, so if you have drainage, I mean, the field is filled with water, then you will have less number of working days. So less working days because unless the soil is dry, you cannot work in the field. That is the thing. And, and the other one is compaction. When you use the uh, farming equipment, so definitely that compacts the soil. Uh, and uh, distract the soil structure. OK. And uh, other problems could be. Other problems. Other problems could be the flooding. Because the, there is no infiltration, so the excess water definitely going to flood not only the field, the surrounding areas. The second is erosion. So since the soil structure is being distracted or disturbed, so the soil particles are, you know, freely carried away by, uh, you know, runoff. And then the other one is soil salinization. This we have already talked. Soil salinization. OK. So the salts which are uh, present in the soil, so they are going to you know stagnate or within the soil profile, they're not going anywhere, okay? And they're accumulated within the uh, soil system, right? Soil salinity is going to be a problem if, if the drainage is improper, okay? So with this, I'm uh, uh, stopping it here. And the next week we are going to talk about the components, the drainage components, and uh, mostly the surface drainage system. So what kind of operations or what is the field prep we need to do before, you know, uh, doing the uh, before designing the surface drainage system, and then uh, what are the design principles of surface drainage system? So similarly for subsurface drainage system. Okay.
So for, uh, I think in the next one or two weeks, we'll be talking about the both designs, surface and subsurface drainage system designs. And the last week, we'll be focusing on, you know, the case studies, okay? All right, I'll stop here. Yeah, take care, bye-bye. On oh, Nikita Singh, you there? Satish? <laughs>